Good afternoon, everyone. East coast and west coast of Australia pounded by massive waves and storms. Eight meter swells off the west coast, 125 kilometer per hour winds lashing West Australia, Perth drowning. East coast from New South Wales up to Brisbane, massive surf there as well. This is a time lapse before and after during that storm. Water inundating the roads and underpasses. Paddle boards the only way to get around. Canterbury area. Record cold across New South Wales. Snows are arriving in the ski resorts. La Nina definitely starting. We're going to repeat one of these patterns here. Sea surface temperatures around West Australia, cooler than normal. Rainfall totals for Australia. This is what it looked like in the early 1999 La Nina. This is what it looked like in the 72 to 76 La Nina. Sugar prices are up. Good for Australian farmers. More ag prices through the roof. Wild weather is an understatement. Severe storms lashing West Australia. Over hurricane force winds at 125 kilometers per hour. You can easily see where the front was rolling up. This was last week. Huge waves, seven to eight meter waves. Surfers got their fill out there. Perth drowning in so many locations, just flooding, flooding, flooding. They're not used to this much water. Hailstorms damaging the wheat belt, stripping everything that was up and ready for harvest. West Australia coastal waters cooler than usual by about 2 degrees Celsius at this time. Get a close-in look here. Now the newest storm that came through is a little bit closer to New Zealand now as it blew through that low. New Zealand's next. They're going to get pounded. These are the areas that received incredible windstorms along with massive pounding waves that eroded the beaches and took away a bunch of homes out there, flooded the coastal areas. You can see this set here, double overhead on the inside, but check out that set outside. That's got to be double. That's four times overhead coming in, closing out there. Time lapse as the storm started. That entire beach, after it was eroded down to the rock base and took a bunch of homes with it, Beautiful waves coming in. I'm a fan of big waves anyway. I like the, the elegance of how the ocean moves when it gets such energy in it. Coastal areas that hadn't seen this type of flooding in 50, 60 years. Flood walls backed up. Interestingly though, a resident who had lived there said, yeah, I'd been there in the 74 storm, which was the huge one, which was related to La Nina, but it was nothing compared to this storm. So this one is far grander far stronger than what happened in the 70s. This is around St. James Station in Sydney. Water levels there. And this is what I mean by going up the coastal waterways and flooding inland. Look at that near Canterbury, how far that is inland. Getting around the city using a paddleboard, not usual. Brisbane not spared either. Deep waters throughout the city. La Nina watch, definitely. We're going into La Nina. You can see the Central Pacific Enso area cooling. Now CSIRO is developing a climate app to help farmers prepare for the upcoming La Nina so they can have better climate information about how to plant crops on time or use it for animal husbandry. They know massive changes are coming. They are preparing their citizens with at least some plan to get ready when these weather changes occur. And I do believe they know the grand solar minimum is coming, but they can mask it and say it's because of La Nina. United States government has doing nothing except Obama came out and started to warn the people to get ready for a disaster, to prepare some food and water in your homes for several weeks. Beyond that, Australia is so much more advanced putting out an, a weather app for their farmers. Jump back into La Nina, El Nino temperatures. I have put the forecast out that we're going to start screaming to the lowest La Nina we've ever recorded. And when these colder temperatures come in, New South Wales is already breaking record cold temperatures in May. It's going to continue with record snows and cold through New South Wales and along the Gold Coast here, oh, I mean, actually everywhere throughout Australia is going to be record cold, record rain throughout this next year as La Nina intensifies. There's just headline after headline of record cold. The Eastern Australia frost season starts late, but abruptly. It went from literally summer to winter in a day. And these are the kind of changes that you will expect going forward. 
four seasons in a day. Crops can't handle that. With that massive storm that just swept through, blew in a lot of snow, 60, 70 kilometer per hour winds, uh, with a snowstorm getting the slopes ready there. Jumping back into the chart, so the deep La Ninas would have been in the early to mid 70s or the late 1990s. So all we need to do is match up the Southern Oscillation Index, La Nina years here, which we can see the Met Bureau already did a good job of matching that up. And we go back in the earliest with the best records went back to 1980. You can clearly see at the bottom the 1999 was a La Nina for an intense long period of time. We're gonna be at least minimum experiencing that. So we'll jump right over into the uh, Meteorological Bureau here. Now this is a rainfall total from the year 2000 to the year 2016, it's 15 years of time. It's been drying in West Australia and you can see the area, other areas in the outback there that are getting some more rainfall. So all we're really gonna do is jump back and try to match patterns. This is the La Nina from the late 1990s, which was an extended Nina. You can see there was a lot more moisture out west and over in the east coast there. Although Tasmania drying out, but they're receiving record floods. So we need to go further back in time to 1970s. And we'll start to see that Tasmania matches up as well as the east coast there. But where it really starts to get matched is after that La Nina was an extended La Nina in the 1970s as well, we're looking pretty much at this pattern existing right now. So if it exists right now, before we get into the deep Nina, we need to go further back in time, back to 1917 to start matching. I created this chart here at Wood for Trees. I overlapped the Pacific Ocean water temperatures with the Atlantic temperatures with the sunspot cycle, all on a downtrend. And this matches up the best I could find over the last hundred years with the 1970s, where it's all decreasing at the same time. When we get into La Nina, you can clearly see Australia and other areas of the world get wetter. One thing though, talking about commodities and driving on food prices, sugar, three year highs, great for Australian growers, more money in their pockets. Look at the jump though, $383 a ton up to 520. That's a pretty nice increase for them. So my call is, repeat, 1970s La Nina. So of those of you alive back then, we're gonna repeat something like this at the very minimum. Thanks for watching, hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to share this through your social media, as well as jump over to Patreon. You can check me out over there, it's my backup channel, so I can continue this type of research.